Hey, Abbott, what time is it? It's time for the Abbott and Costello Show. We're on the air for ABC here in Hollywood. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go with the Abbott and Costello Show. Costello, what is your Sam Shovel detective story for tonight? It's a fascinating case, Abbott. I call it the case of the curbstone murder or Gertie get out of the gutter. And let the water go by. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds intriguing. Let's get on with the case. Yeah, let's do that. And now, the makers of Smudge Pot Cigarettes present the further adventures of Sam Shovel, private detective. But first, a word about our product, Smudge Pot Cigarettes. Smudge pots are the only cigarettes that contain no nicotine, no harmful tars, no tobacco. (laughs) These cigarettes are made only from the finest domestic and Turkish towels. (laughs) And remember our slogan, smudge pots are the only cigarettes that contain alum. Our slogan is, pucker while you puff. Now go to your cigar store tonight. They will give you a package of smudge pots for nothing. The package has no sharp edges. Take them home and throw them in your dresser. What a cigarette, so free, so easy on the drawers. (laughs) And now to the adventures of Sam Shovel, private detective. Yes. Yes, I'm Sam Shovel, private detective. I'm sitting in my little office looking at my new office safe. This time I got a real office safe. When I go home at night, I lock my office in it. (laughs) I see a piece of string around my finger. Suddenly I remember what it's for. It's to remind me to take the string off my finger. (laughs) I reach in my pocket for my tobacco. There's a big hole in my pocket. That's the last time I'll buy chewing tobacco. (laughs) I always choose a hole in my pocket. (laughs) This detective racket is plenty tough. You've got to work in all kinds of weather. Just listen to that wind howling outside. I'll give you that if you'll give me this. I'll give you this if you give me that. It's a trade wind. It was such a nice night as this that I was called to solve the famous farmyard murder. A fiendish farmer had cut off his hired man's head. He hid it in the alfalfa. What a tough case. It was like finding a noodle in a haystack. (laughs) I decide to shave. I lather my face. The razor hums through my whiskers. St. Louis woman with all her diamond rings. I always use Gillette Blues blades. (laughs) I decide to dial up a little in case a client should come in. I put on my swallowtail coat. I take it off. Seems silly for a man my age to wear a coat made of (laughs) swallowtail. I notice the headline in the morning paper. The country is in a strange position. On the next page it says, eggs are going up. Chickens must be in a strange position too. Suddenly, the phone rings. Hello? Yes, this is Sam Shovel, the detective. Somebody that wants me to handle the case. Yes? No. No, I can't work that cheap. No, no, you know my prize. What's that? 5,000? Okay, I'll take the case. Right, 5,000. But remember, all Tootsie Rolls, no jelly beans. I thought of my friend, Lieutenant Abbott of the Homicide Squad. I might get him to help me on this case. Some people think Lieutenant Abbott has a screw loose in his head, but I know different. I tightened that screw in his head only yesterday. (laughs) One thing I will say for Lieutenant Abbott, he knows his onions. He can walk in any vegetable store and say, that's an onion. (laughs) But he's a real cop. Abbott don't know the meaning of the word intimidation. That's only one of a million words you don't know the meaning of. (laughs) Hello, Sam Shovel. It's my pal, Lieutenant Abbott of the Homicide Squad. Sam, 
I'd like to leave my new cowhide briefcase in your office. That's a pretty briefcase, Lieutenant. Yeah. It's genuine cowhide. Open it. Moo. <laughs> the cow is still hiding in it. There's a picture of your wife in it, too. She looks kind of different in this picture. It's her hair. She's wearing a page boy. Don't she look nice? It's hard to tell. The page boy's feet are hanging down over her face. <laughs> Enough of this nonsense, Ham. The cops caught an old friend of yours last night. Shirley, the shoplifter. Beautiful Shirley, the shoplifter. I once trailed her through a department store, through the shoe department, through the jewelry department, the furniture department, then I caught her in men's underwear. (laughs) This is serious, Ham. Shirley is in the prison hospital. She's unconscious. She keeps moaning, Harry... Perry! Perry! You must be in the state of Como. (laughs) Sam, if you want to see Shirley alive, we better get over to the hospital at once. Let's go. We arrived at the hospital. We were walking down the corridor. I was reading the signs on the door. Dr. Kildare, surgery, back in ten minutes. Dr. Nichols, surgery, back in fifteen minutes. Dr. Condon, perjury, back in 20 years. <laughs> Sam, here comes the doctor that's taking care of Shirley the shoplifter. He looks like a phony to me. I heard that, young man. I'll have you know that I've operated on over 300 patients and I never lost a single one of them. You didn't? No, I know where each one of them is buried. <laughs> Doctor, can we go in and see Shirley now? Yes, but don't stay too long, please. The patient must not have too much excitement. Why not? How do I know? All the radio doctors say that. (laughs) My goodness. Aren't you Sam Shovel, the detective? That's me. Man, from the looks of you, you need medical attention. Uh, Shovel, if you'll come here tomorrow between 2 and 4 or between 6 and 8, remember, between 2 and 4 or 6 and 8... I'll examine your head. Why can't I come between four and six? That's when they're examining my head. (laughs) Come on, Sam Shovel. Here's Shirley's room. Uh, Oh, poor Shirley, my poor Shirley. Sir, who are you? And what are you doing here? I'm Shirley's father. She's in the next room. She's got a premisitis. None of the doctors will operate on her. I'm afraid she'll die. Cheer up, friend. I will operate on Shirley. You? I thought you were a detective. Before I became a detective, I was known as young Dr. Shovel. (laughs) Are you sure you can do it, Sam? Am I sure I can do it? Certainly. I'll skin out to the car and get my satchel of surgical instruments. (laughs) Thank goodness he's got his satchel. She's right in there, Sam. Here I go. Has anybody got a hammer? Here's a hammer. Thanks. Anybody got a chisel? Here's a chisel. Anybody got a blowtorch? Wait a minute, Sam. Sam, hammer, chisel, blowtorch. What are you doing to Shirley? What, Shirley? First I got to open my satchel. (laughs) Well, Costello, as Sam Shovel, you were really digging him up tonight. (laughs) Get it? Shovel, digging them up? (laughs) It's a joke, son. I dug up a joke. Yes, and you'd better bury it again. (laughs) Abbott, let's leave the jokes to our writer. You mean we got writers? Oh, he's only kidding, folks. He knows our writing staff. We're headed by Eddie Foreman with Paul Conlon, Pat Costello, Martin Ragaway, and Len Stern. And I know that our producer is Charles Vander. That's pretty good for Abbott, folks, when you consider Vander's only been on the show two years. (laughs) Good night, folks. Good night, everybody. Good night. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.